It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southwest region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors Southwest. So, you go in, you sit down at your favorite restaurant at the corner table on a Friday night. You pick up the menu, you peruse down it, and you tell the waiter, I think I'll have the blackened tilapia. Did you ever stop to wonder, what is a tilapia? What does one look like? Where does it come from? How do they catch them? Well, on today's show, you're going to see my very first experience at a sport that's actually beginning to catch on around some parts of our region and it's fishing for tilapia. I'd like to welcome you in right now to Glen Rose, Texas. This is Squaw Creek Lake or Squaw Creek Reservoir. It's a power plant lake and it is loaded with tilapia. We'll talk about where they come from, how they feed, and how you could actually take a bunch of kids out, catch a bunch of tilapia to take home and eat for your very own. While I'm out doing that in the Bass Tracker Pro Team 175 TXW, we're going to be taking you around the region for your local fishing reports. We've got an expert team of insider reporters today just waiting to give you all the latest information for your weekend fishing trip. So, let's get the boat launched, let's get out in Squaw Creek Lake, let's get started catching some tilapia. Let's take you to the FSN studios for your weekend planner. The Salooner tables are pointing to Sunday as the best opportunity for fishing this weekend. The peak activity should begin around 8.54 in the morning and again at 9.16 in the evening. The sun will rise at 7.14 and set at 7.26. And the moon will only be 11% illuminated. Stay with us, all of your fishing updates from around the region are on the way. And I'll return with Bassmaster Elite Angler Tommy Biffle with some advice on crankbait fishing. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Excite AGM Marine Batteries. Starts like new, stays like new longer. By Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. With our baits, a good day of fishing is in the bag. By Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers and by Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Welcome to the big leagues. Bye. Got him. Look at that big dude. There's a tilapia right there. We're gonna stick him in the net. There we go. That'll get it started just to show you what one looks like. Hey, welcome back everybody. Fox Sports Outdoors today. Doing something very unique. Catching tilapia. And that's a good one right there just to get it started. Let me tell you just a little background of these fish. Uh, they are a non-native species. They're not, uh, they're not from the United States at all, not from America. They're actually from Africa. And uh, there are over a, a hundred different species of tilapia. This particular species that lives in the lake we're on today, which is Squaw Creek, is a, is a blue tilapia. They were brought here and introduced into several lakes in the south to try to control vegetation, try to control all the grass and millfold and hydrilla that was taking over a lot of the lakes in the south. And they do a very good job of that. The problem is they can spawn as often as every two weeks. So they can literally overtake a lake, a pond, or a reservoir very quickly. So you gotta be very careful with them. Here at Squaw Creek, the rule is, the law is, that you may not throw these fish back. You either have to uh, keep them and eat them, which they're fantastic eating, or you got to just throw them up, up on the bank and kill them because it's illegal to release the fish back into the lake. We are going to keep fish. I'm going to tell you some more about the fish you should keep and eat and the ones you might want to have second thoughts about. We'll talk to you about that here in just a little bit. Right now, though, this one goes in the live well. We get you some fishing reports started from your local lakes, rivers, and bays. In Louisiana, here's Cajun Phil in Kentucky. Hi friends, Cajun Phil here with the Fox Louisiana Fishing Report. I tell you what, what can we talk about this week? I tell you what, we've been gator hunting for the last couple of weeks. Lots of big old gators. As a matter of fact, we averaged almost eight foot of gator for all of our hunters. As far as the dove hunting goes, well, we got a lot of dove also. Now what we get ready for, we're geared up for teal season right now. I tell you what, it looks good. The right fields are loaded with teal, but we're looking for a real good teal season. As far as the 
fishing goes. I just hung up from talking to old Captain Kevin. Kevin says, Dad, right now we got our living a redfish. That's four, four man living, just 20 redfish. He said, we're working on a trout. We got 11 so far, but he said, before I come in, I should have a pretty good bet. To me, 20 reds and 11 specks is a pretty good mess already. But as far as the rest of the state goes, let's talk about bass fishing right now. I'll tell you what, friends, we talked to some real good friends this morning. They were fishing over in their Chapalaya Basin. They said, Cajun, same old story. You want to catch a rail, get you some crickets, get you some worms, come on down and you catch bluegill, chicken pin, goggle line, white perch, it don't matter. If you want to catch bass, put on a little single spin spinnerbait. Now keep in mind, over there, the water's a coffee color, real dark. The gold blades work better. White or chartreuse curves working really well. The only other bait I've caught maybe a little creature worm, and maybe a little crack bait also. Just easing this little thing along the bottom. There he is, earthworm. Oh, that's a largemouth bass. Can you believe that? Caught a bass on an earthworm. What a dumb thing. And a pretty nice one too. Well, that's a little tilapia bonus right there, if you can believe that. A largemouth bass hit an earthworm, and he today is a trash fish. Well, stay with us. Doing a little tilapia fishing today. Having a lot of fun doing it. This is a great way to come take kids fishing. You never know what you're going to catch right there. Back he goes. Stay with us. Coming right back to Squaw Creek Lake in uh, Central Texas. Talk to you some more about tilapia fishing. Give you a few more little keys in case you'd like to get out and do some of this on your own. Here's a bite right here. Got one. Another tilapia. Oh, that one's got real bright blue fins. Yeah, there we go. Blue tilapia. Hey, welcome back everybody. You're on Fox Sports Outdoors today. And we're uh, doing something we've never done before. A little tilapia fishing for you right there. That's a nice specimen right there. These are tropical fish and they cannot live in cold water. The hotter the water, the better they like it. That's why they like power plant lakes. Squaw Creek, where we are today, is a power plant lake, and the water here is artificially warmed. So uh, these fish, the, particularly the blue tilapia, are a little bit tougher. They can actually live in a little colder water than some of the other tilapia species. This particular one can live in water temperatures down to 45 degrees, which it never gets to in these power plant lakes, and that's why they thrive so well and actually overpopulate. Wild caught tilapia like these are really good eating and they're good for you. But there are some warnings that are out on the farm raised tilapia. They deal with the omega-6 fatty acids that are not very good for human consumption. And there are some reports that say these farm raised tilapia are extra high in that omega-6 fatty acid. So you may want to go make a determination for yourself after reading some of the reports as to whether you want to eat the farm raised fish or not. But these are the wild caught ones and they are absolutely good to eat and we are keeping a bunch of them today. We're going to fillet these up. Hey, let's get you some more fishing and lake reports right now. Let's go to Texas with Brian Hughes with your freshwater report followed by Bill Olson on the coast. Hi folks, welcome to this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you by More Security and Heritage Safes. Now this week we ventured all the way west just south of Lubbock to Lake Allen Henry. You may remember a few years ago, Alan Henry was putting out mucho shara lunkers each year, and then it got kind of quiet. Well, I don't think it's through with big fish. I think they're just through talking about it. When you come to Alan Henry, bring your big baits, your big spinner baits, your big Texas rig worms, and even upsize your drop shot rigs. Work the ledges, work the slides out in the deeper water as the water levels have dropped a little bit over the last couple of years. That'll get you on some big bass on Allen Henry. Now over at Lake Louisville, north of Dallas, the catfish are going crazy in shallow water. They're up in two, three, four foot of water feeding on young shad. Use your cut bait and you'll catch plenty of Louisville cats. And finally, Ray Robert Sandys off the main lake points surfacing in the morning. Use your small top waters and then some little slabs after that and you'll get sandied on Lake Ray Roberts. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you by Heritage Safes and More Security. Now let's check in with Mr. Bill Olson. He's on the coast. Hi folks, this week's report is brought to you by Port Aransas on Mustang Island. 
the fishing capital of Texas, where anglers enjoy pristine bays, estuaries, 18 miles of surf, and the deep blue waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Plus, the local restaurants will even cook your catch come sundown. Come fish and play Texas Island style. For more information, visit portarangis.org. Well, anglers are seeing a more consistent pattern with cool fronts arriving almost on a weekly basis. Air temperatures on the upper coast are running about normal with mid-coast temperatures running cooler than normal. Bird activity continues to be the hot ticket on Sabine and Galveston bays. If smaller schooly trout are encountered, tie on a heavier 3 8 ounce jig head to get down below those schoolies to better fish. Redfish continue to be active throughout Sabine and Galveston bays. Anglers working birds and drifting mid-bay reefs in East Matagorda have been rewarded. Also, the deeper grass beds and guts of West Matagorda have scored a good topwater bite early, and bass assassins fished on a one-quarter ounce or lighter jig head have produced. Now, live bait anglers fishing mud, trailer, dagger, and other mid-coast hotspots have switched to piggy perch now that croaker have gotten too large. Also a good topwater bite early and lasting longer on cloudy days is occurring. Soft plastic tails have continued the action once the topwater bite slows. Redfish around Bird Island Basin have been good. Also anglers have been rewarded around Shamrock Cove. On the lower coast, Longbar, Mexiquita Flats, and gas wells continue to be most often mentioned. A mixed bag of trout, redfish, and drum have been caught. Offshore weed lines continue to hold a variety of pelagic species. This weekend, both Saturday and Sunday have a double tide schedule of two high and two low tides each day. I'm Bill Olson, and I'll see you on the coast. There's one swimming in a live earthworm, and he bit it. Paralyzed. Come in here. All right, there's one right there. Hey, tilapia fishing, man. Let me mention a couple of things real quick before the next break. Social media. We've really made a change and we're updating everything on our Twitter feed. So if you want to see the latest fish pictures, video from us, uh, Coast to Catch of the Week winners, lots more fishing information. You need to see it on our Twitter feed, the Twitter address you see at the bottom of your screen. We are still occasionally updating our Facebook page, but you need to join Twitter if for no other reason just to follow us because we put a lot of good stuff up there. And the other thing, all of our latest video, how-to videos, product videos, latest episodes, sneak peek previews, you'll be the first to see everything each week on our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Right below the latest episode, you'll see more episodes and video here. Click on that and you'll see the whole array of all of our latest videos. We'll be back for more tilapia fishing right after this. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. By Mercury Marine, celebrating 75 years of marine excellence. By Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability. By Tracker Boats, it's more than just a boat, it's a tracker. And by Whataburger, get your day started at Whataburger with the new Jalapeno Cheddar Biscuit. Got him. Whoa, whoa, baby. What a fight, man. You get just some light tackle, a little strand fluorocast, six pound line. Mm. And they are a blast. Look at that dude. Look at the color on this fish. That's a blue tilapia, believe it or not, even though he's kind of a pink color. But uh, what a great fight. These fish, if you read about them online, they're represented to be vegetarians. I can promise you that is absolutely not true. We've seen these fish today blowing up on schools of shad. They're little bitty tiny shad just roaming in herds all throughout this flat in here. And these tilapia have literally been schooling on those, killing them, and then eating them. They absolutely are not vegetarians. Also, we've had several boats around here that have been catching them on little spinners and little plastic grubs. So you can catch them on artificials. Now I've been catching them on live earthworms. And also I've got some friends that have been catching them on dough or bread. Light spinning tackle is perfect for these. 
These particular fish are holding a foot or two off the bottom, so I'm throwing it out on a little split shot, letting it go down, and gently lifting it up and trying to hold it about a foot off the bottom, and that's where they're biting it. All right, we've got tilapia working today and teaching you how to catch them, and uh, right now we're gonna get you some more fishing and lake reports. It's Oklahoma time, and here's Gary Dolomite. Hey, when longtime Grand Lake fishing guide Ivan Martin calls and tells you the crappie are biting, you better pay attention. Well, he did, and I am. The crappie are biting on Grand Lake. Ivan says you can catch those fish in the brush piles. This is also the time of year and will be for the next several weeks you can catch them shooting docks. Now, if you haven't learned the shooting dock technique, here's the time to practice it. It's like using your rod and reel like a bow and arrow to shoot and skip your crappie jigs back up underneath those obstacles and obstructions around the bow docks, catch the crappies suspended underneath them. A lot of fun, learn that technique. Good crappie reports coming in from elsewhere too. Now George Tolson and his son-in-law John Wagner had a great trip on Lake Hudson. They caught good numbers and good sized slabs casting and swimming the baby shad swimmer over brush piles 10 to 12 feet of water. Their best colors were glacier and electric chicken. Now George also said they caught some nice bass on that same outing fishing the biffle bug on the hardhead dragging it through the rocks. Great bass fishing, great crappie fishing Lake Hudson. Good bass report coming in from Keystone Lake too. Jack Seawright called, said he's catching good numbers and good size of bass, fishing a shaky head rigged with a tattletail worm on the long points five to seven feet of water. Said he can also catch some fish on a jig, also catch some fish on a weightless salt flicker thrown in and around the shallow brush on Keystone. Jack asked me to remind you that as we see some of our fall drawdowns taking place, Keystone's down about four or five feet now, to be careful navigating those waters because you have some underwater obstructions close to the surface now. Take care. Great time of year to be fishing in Oklahoma, but one thing about it, you can't catch them if you don't go. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Costa Sunglasses. See what's out there. By Lou's, setting a new standard in fishing performance. Feel the difference. By Strike King Lures, number one in fishing. By Lowrance Electronics, find, navigate, dominate. By Fort Worth Nissan, Fox Sports Outdoors is powered by Fort Worth Nissan. Welcome back everyone, it's time for the Whataburger Ask the Pro, where viewers get questions answered by professional anglers. This week Mike asks, is a low gear ratio really better for fishing a crankbait, or is that just a sales pitch? For the answer we ask Bassmaster Elite Angler, Tommy Biffle. No, a low gear ratio reel makes it a lot easier, like a, a 10XD or DD22 makes it a lot easier to reel. So, you know, I, I prefer a five to one, five to three, somewhere like that on those big crankbaits. Thanks, Tommy. If you want some help from one of the pros, go to foxsportsoutdoors.com and follow the Ask the Pro link to submit your question. Now it's time for someone to win a new pair of sunglasses on the Costa Catch of the Week. This week's winner in the Costa Catch of the Week contest, who wins free Costa sunglasses, is Zach Haltom of Deer Park, Texas. And he is showing off, look at this photo. This is one of our best ever, a 150 pound tarpon. He caught three miles off Galveston, Texas. It took two hours to land this tarpon. And get this, he lost his best pair of Costa glasses on the way in, but guess what? He wins a brand new pair for this great photo. If you would like to enter the contest, all you have to do is go to foxsportsoutdoors.com and if we select yours, you'll win your choice of any new pair of Costa sunglasses. Now you can see all of the Costa frame and lens styles at their website. You get there by going back to the front page of our website and clicking on the Costa logo. They're all displayed there, including the great frames and lenses that I was wearing on this week's episode. The frames are called Cabalito. Next up, it's the Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff feature. The right gear if you want to go catch tilapia at a lake that has these fish near you. Two different ways that we used to catch them today. First of all, a slip bobber rig, and it begins with a little chartreuse line tie that acts as a bobber stop, and then the bobber comes up against that so that you can control your depth. And then below that, you have a little split shot that we have actually clipped onto the line, and below that we use a tiny little hook, even for these big tilapia, this is just a little perch hook, I think it's maybe a number two or three. The other tools you'll need are earthworms, just a regular 
styrofoam package of earthworms. You can buy that at most any bait store or sporting goods store. And then a package of bread, or I used rolls. And all we did was just moisten those a little bit, form them up into a dough ball. You can catch them on bread, earthworms, or as we saw today, they'll bite a wide variety of little, small artificial lures, like a Bobby Garland, Baby Shad, or Slab Slayer would work perfectly, or a little small inline spinner. There is a swelling controversy surrounding the red snapper fishery in the Gulf of Mexico. And in case you haven't heard about it yet, and you will, it surrounds the current nine day red snapper season in June with only a two fish per person per day bag limit. There was an article published recently by the New Orleans Times-Picayune that interviews the nation's leading expert on red snapper in the Gulf. His name is Dr. Bob Shipp. Authorities agree he's the man when it comes to red snapper expertise. Dr. Shipp's research indicates that there's no shortage of red snapper in the Gulf at all. In fact, quite the contrary, the population is higher than it's ever been due to extensive habitat placed in the Gulf since the 1940s, including oil platforms and artificial reefs. 17,000 of them off the coast of Alabama alone hold an estimated 20 to 25 million pounds of red snapper. Now, the Magnuson-Stevens Act of 1976 and was revised in 96 is a federal document that controls the annual quota of red snapper that can be harvested, thus the ultra short season and the small bag limits. Dr. Shipp advocates that red snapper be taken completely off the list of controlled species and turned over to the states or to the already successful Gulf States Marine Fisheries Commission. Now that is a co-op between the five Gulf states to regulate fishing along the entire Gulf Coast. I just returned from a tour of all five Gulf Coast state fisheries and every charter captain I talked to said this law is hurting their business needlessly. So it's time to change it. You can have input by attending a meeting of the Gulf of Mexico Fishery Management Council. They make the recommendations to the federal fisheries policy. You can find the meeting schedule online at their website at the web address you see on your screen. And you can read the article quoting Dr. Ship at our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Your voice counts and you can play a role in making some sense out of a senseless situation. Hey, I hope you enjoyed our trip today to Squaw Creek Lake in Central Texas near Glen Rose catching tilapia. There are tilapia in lots of reservoirs, many of them power plant reservoirs and some ponds and small lakes across the entire south. You can have a great time catching these fish, great table fare, and you can take some invasive species out of our public waters. Hey, don't forget to join us next week. We'll be on Thursday night at 10.30 p.m. with a repeat airing Saturday morning at 7.30. And don't forget that our videos page is loaded up with our archived past episodes of our show, current episodes, sneak peek previews, how-to videos, and product videos, and you get there off the front page of our website by clicking on more episodes and video here. I'll meet you right back here next week. Until then, I'm Barry Stokes saying be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.